Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sipski, your host. In this video, I want to talk about the Fuji X-T3 camera, why it's still relevant in the year 2022 and beyond. I own this camera for almost a year now, and I have many Sony cameras. Now, coming from that to this Fuji film, I still think that it's worth the money in the year 2022, especially when you are buying used. Let's talk about it right now. Alright, so you're thinking of purchasing the Fuji X-T3 in the year 2022 and beyond. Is it worth it? Well, I'm coming from the Sony camera. So here I have the Sony A7R 3 I'm still keeping it. It's a full frame camera, whereas this is the APS-C camera. I already sold my Sony A6100 and I'm going to keep this camera instead because I find that this camera, in terms of video, filming and all that, it's more of the cinematic grade because you can do 422 10-bit through the HDMI and it can do also 4K 60. There's other important key features in this camera that makes this camera a cinematic type of camera. It's a hybrid camera. You can use it for photography, which is like, I think it's a 26 megapixel, as well as that it can also be used for filming short films and documentary or whatever you want. And the price is also right as well. In fact, you can get one use for under a thousand US dollars. So that is awesome. Now, of course, you would have to go with its Fuji lens system. Now, Sigma also, I heard that they're coming up something for the Fuji and it's released this month in March. So have a look at that. And it's a bit more cheaper than the native Fuji lens. So there's one, I think it's 30 mils F 1.4 for under 300 US dollars. So that's awesome. I think it's at 350, I can't remember the exact price, but yeah, that's still a good price for a prime lens uh, F 1.4, 30 mils. Okay, so that's one of the cheapest wide aperture lens out there for the Fuji system. So now the Fuji system has a uh, you know, third party lens that is a very good quality. Like Sigma is one of the third party lens system that I say is really up there now in terms of the quality compared to Sony, Panasonic. So Sigma makes a very good lens. Okay, so that's one of the things that you have to think about, you know, the type of lens that uh, you're gonna be using. This is an APS-C sensor. So the lens would be crop 1.5 compared to the full frame. But most of the cinematic film that's done in the past, is actually on a Super 35 anyway. So it's using a crop sensor. So yeah, so you're not gonna go wrong for doing any type of films, especially if you're trying to imitate, you know, the film in the past, right? The full frame is starting to be more accepting, but the problem with for us as a starting filmmaker, the price on the full frame lens uh, are getting pretty expensive compared to the APS-C or the uh, micro four thirds. Now that's not the reason why I kept this camera. I find in fact that, you know, coming from the Sony cameras, I find that navigating through this camera was a little bit um, flimsy. I, I find that like, when I'm doing the filming, I was fidgeting around with the button a lot because I'm not used to Fuji, right? But I don't give up so easily when I'm testing out cameras. I give it, you know, at least a year or two in the camera system until I'm pretty much well versed in this camera. Same thing with the Panasonic. I own a Panasonic GH4 and I love that camera. But initially when I started using it, it was really hard on me. And now the Panasonic GH4 is my A camera for vlogging. Okay, so I think Panasonic is great and I'm going to stick with the Micro Four Thirds, especially the new one that's coming out, GH6. I'm not going to buy GH6 yet, but you know, GH4 can fulfill that role right now and for what I'm doing, it's fine. Maybe if my GH4 breaks down, I'll purchase GH6, but that'll be another five years from now when the price drops again, right? I always buy, most of the time anyway, used cameras, making sure that it's in good quality when you buy it, okay? Now back to Fuji X-T3. Yeah, so when I first used it for the first few weeks, it was very difficult. I was trying to take a picture of my son and I didn't know where the, you know, continuous manual or single shot was uh, located. I didn't see it anywhere here, but I realized Fuji actually put it in the front here. So it was a bit different from my Sony A7R uh, 3 and my other A6000 or A5000. So 
it was hard to navigate because you know going from one system to another but usually i don't give up because in the fuji system there's a lot of thing in it that i'm gonna continue on to use it and one thing is i like to have is the 10-bit 422 that fuji film offer in the APS-C line like if you look at for example the sony none of their uh, APS-C camera including the latest one the a6600 i believe is only 8-bit 422 external hdmi right so here if you put an hdmi hook up to the Ni uh, ninja v for example or even my old uh, shogun and shogun inferno it can do 10-bit 422 4k that's awesome and dci 4k as well and 4k 60 frames per second right so and uh, 1080p 120 frames per second for 2210 bit so that is amazing quality especially if you can record it in raw or record in prores this camera can handle it even the year 2022 and beyond so if you're serious about you know short films and all that and you want to get the correct color and you want to do post and all that this camera does it now that was one of the uh thing that convinced me to buy Fuji film. I'm gonna learn about its navigation, how to do a certain thing. It's gonna take me some time to learn it, but I think it's worth it for sure because of what this camera can offer. All right, so another thing that I like about this camera, and that's why I'm sticking with it, and you know, if you're thinking about it, make sure that you have all these things as well. I have this uh, prime lens, it's a 18 mils, right? And if I look at it, it has a um, ring that is 52 mils, and that's perfect for my variable ND filters. I purchased this ND filter some time ago, probably less than 30 bucks. It, it came with uh, one of the camera system that somebody sold to me and they gave me this as part of the package. So if I do the calculation, it's less than $30, right? And this is great because the ND filter, the variable one anyway, allows me to you know, change the coating on it from very dark, let me see if I can show you, right? To very bright. There we go, see? And I can put on my 18 mil lens here. Okay, so now my system, I have a variable ND filter on an 18 mil lens from Fuji. So very compact, very small with a variable ND filter, which is amazing, right? So now I have a camera that can do 4 to 2, 10 bit, and it can have its own variable ND filter on a small, a lens look at that 18 mils f2 awesome awesome so that's already very convincing that this system that i have now uh, that i purchased all together for less than 1300 canadian dollars that has that ability to do all these things in addition i was looking into the power system on fujifilm now fujifilm xt3 doesn't have a very good uh, power system i think the battery is it's not powerful enough it's quite small and it lasts i think less than uh, 70 minutes of recording so that's not very good if you're gonna do you know continuous shoot for the whole day you probably need at least three batteries all together so I end up purchasing a external power system like this one here I was able to get and let me show you quickly it's basically a dummy battery as you can see here you have a dummy battery yeah okay and then it's connected to USB. So if I have a power bank, I can charge my Fuji X-T3 with a dummy battery connected to my power bank, which will last me the whole day. Or if I want to plug into a AC outlet, I could do that as well. So that's the feature. Now, if I want to go for an even long, long period of time, I can also hook up to this system here that I purchased online, which is using the Sony NP battery system. Let me show you quickly. There we go. As you can see, we have the Fuji uh, battery, dummy battery. And then here you can slip in the MP battery. Let me just, where's my, oh yeah, there we go. MP battery from Sony. Look at how big this thing. This is a 7,900 milliamp hour battery. I just put into like that and I'll have a battery that lasts a whole day without even a blink. Okay, so there we go. We have a, a battery system externally hook up to the Fuji X-T3. So I was able to take care of the power system. I was able to take care of the uh, ND filters. This, this is a variable ND filters on the Fuji film. Now this becomes a dream camera, especially having that ND filters, variable ND filters, the unlimited power system, being able to connect to a Atomo Shogun that I have 
to film in 422 10-bit in 4K DCI. You now have a system that matches a lot of these cinema camera out there that is over $3,000. So that's why I'm sticking to the Fuji Film X-T3 camera because I was able to get all these accessories and make this camera a, a film killer camera even in the year 2022. Definitely worth the investment. Now I have the gimbal back there, the DJI Ronin S. So I was able to hook it up to this camera and have a pretty decent stabilizer as well. In fact, I prefer having um, the stabilizer that's done through the gimbal instead of internal stabilizer. I find that the internal stabilizer from any camera, even the Panasonic GH6, is good, but still not good enough. I think I prefer to have the uh, gimbal attached to it. Now it's going to be bulky, but hey, when you're doing run and gun situation, it doesn't really matter. You need to have it anyway to keep the image quite stable. So at the end of the day, having you know the proper gimbal, that you, you know you might want to purchase that for the uh, Fuji film when you're walking around anyway, doing uh, independent film, and having indie filters, having external battery, having uh, Ninja or Ultima Shogun. All these uh, external recorder that can do 10 bit 422 4k dci i think this is a killer camera even in the year 2022 so yeah definitely uh, a keeper so hopefully you are convinced that this camera can do the job if you decide to become an independent filmmaker i definitely think that fuji film xt3 is a great camera in fact is the best aps-c video camera out there right now given all the accessories that I mentioned to you. I forgot to mention one more thing. Fujifilm X-T3 can hook up to my Nikon older uh, classic lens as well as my Sony A-mount lens. So I have two lens system from Sony A-mount and the Nikon system, The I think it's the older, I can't remember the name, it's the F-mount I believe, or even the G-mount. I can hook up to this Fujifilm now. It's going to be all manual, but that's okay. Like I said, when I'm doing film, it's going to be manual focus anyway. So having the two lens system and I have all the lens that is necessary for filming from Nikon and Sony A mount system. Wow. You, I mean, like you cannot go wrong with this Fuji X-T3. So that's why I'm saying uh, once you go through all the accessory that supports this system, the Fujifilm, um, there's no way you want to sell it. Okay. In the future, I'll talk more about the different mount system that I was able to put in using an adapter and I can like, you know, adjust to different type of lens from Nikon and Sony A mount lenses. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll have more video on Fuji X-T3 as well. Next time I'll talk about Sigma FP, why I'm also keeping that camera uh, in my camera system. So now I have Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, and Sigma. They're all amazing camera if you know how to use them and if there's a system that supports it and they all do. I'll talk more about that in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.